The 30 juz of Qur'an, those 30 juz will be like a power in the seven holy verses of Surat Al-Fatiha. And the seven verses are like seven waterfalls in the heavenly realm and from the verse, Alhamdulillah, every time when we're reciting Surat Al-Fatiha we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, every verse from Holy Qur'an that deals with Alhamd of Allah and the secret of Hamd is flowing from that verse. So as soon as you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all the barakah and blessings of every verse of Holy Qur'an that deals with Hamd is dressed upon the soul and that's why Mawlana Shaykh Daghestani, Mawlana Shaykh Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Shaykh Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil. They said that it's enough just to recite Fatiha, to recite all those realities and all those secrets and that's why we say Basira Surat Al-Fatiha. When we're going to recite over food or over anything we're going to do, Ya Rabbi by the secret of which I know or I don't know of the reality that you put in Surat Al-Fatiha let my soul to be dressed from it and blessed from it. InshaAllah dress us, bless us from that reality and to give us the dressing and the blessings of now the opening of Milad al Nabi coming within the next few days inshaAllah. By Tuesday, Wednesday then inshaAllah the, the, the lights and the blessings of that reality. We're in the month of Subhanahu man huwa alimun hakeem that Allah want to give knowledges and wisdom and that to run from shaitan and enter into the cave of rahmah and mercy. And only Allah come into our life to clarify that cave is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So these nashis, these salawats, this month, the month in which increase as much as we can our salawats that is our safety from every type of hardship and difficulty. Every time we make a salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad the ruh, the soul of Prophet is all encompassing of our light. And Allah promises from Holy Qur'an that I would not punish them while you are amongst them. So we are, our life is how to keep ourselves amongst Sayyidina Muhammad and easiest, most powerful is that mention and make salawat, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa la ali Sayyidina Muhammad The soul of Prophet is all encompassing around that servant, dressing, blessing and taking every type of hardship and every type of difficulty away so that every difficulty facing the servant becomes small and insignificant inshaAllah to their body and to their soul, inshaAllah that Allah dress us and bless us from those realities inshaAllah. Hurmat Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah we are in the month of the reality of the seven sleepers and one lion of Allah that guards that reality our life is to become and to move towards the seven sleepers and not the seven dwarfs. <laughs> Because the, there's, a, there's a counter for the seven sleepers are the seven dwarfs. Those are the grumpy, angry, whatever the other dwarfs are. Lloyd was supposed to put those I images onto the, the screen for our viewers who are watching online. Means our life is to counter those characteristics, not to be grumpy, try to be happy. Especially with on a broken path if Allah is testing the servant. Awliyaullah come into our lives to remind us, stay quiet, never open your mouth, never scream, never yell, never exhibit any type of characteristic, don't complain because it's Allah who's testing you, crushing you, grinding you because He wants to see that are you a flower yet? If, if it's nothing then yeah of course every gand, every bad smell will come from you. If you are a flower then Allah said, well your true nature and your true significance to humanity can never be achieved with your anger, with your characteristics. Means the fragrance of the rose is only released when crushing comes and this crushing releases the reality of its oil, means the inner reality of our being. Not what we think people benefit from our form, is of no benefit to people but with the crushing 
the inner benefit of the soul, the oil of our existence, the wealth of our being is the soul. So Allah is going to test, grind and then the good character receives the ni'mat and the blessing of Allah If He makes that soul to be sweet everybody benefits. And that's why these awliyaullah whom Allah continuously crushing in their lives, they are a fragrance upon this earth because of that character. They, they, they may yell in private to release their energy to, to, to pull out this hardship within their heart but in the face of people and the communities is to be steadfast. And those whom don't exhibit that is a sign for who their station is. When you sit and complain and make videos of complaining and, and agitate and aggravate and, and always have to say something, it's not our way. Our way was to take the rokes and remain silent because it's Allah who's sending. Every tongue that comes to you is from Allah Every hand that reached to you is from Allah Allah. In Allahu basirun bi ibad. The maqam of faith is, Ya Rabbi, for verily you see my condition. If for a moment you think the difficulty came to you and Allah didn't know about it, it's against your belief. Sorry, I fell asleep at that moment, I didn't know something happened to you. It's impossible. Allah is ever vigilant, everything is, is written on a code. Just think at the atomic level that somebody's hand or voice or somebody's presence can't enter into your field of energy unless you would explode. All your atoms would explode if, if there was no permission for these electrons to come into a field within each other. So Allah gave a permission for that person to enter into your field like a railroad track. The track was switched by Allah and now it begins to move towards the person. Nothing, nothing can come towards anyone that Allah hasn't written for it. So then this is all these practices is to remain silent, to be of good character and keep asking, Wa fa'udu amri Ya Rabbi you see my condition please, Rabbana don't, what's that the dua we make the Ya Rabbi don't test me beyond my ability to be tested. Those are the communications with Allah is the Ya Rabbi Please don't test me beyond my ability, barely you see my condition that make everything to be easy and light for me. But to know that it's coming from Allah that you don't have to deal with the characters of the play, you have to deal with the one whom wrote the play. It means everything goes back to Allah that He can only change the characters in my life and what they're doing and what they're trying to, to, to put upon me. So it's everything returning back to Allah Again more and more understanding this is the month of the cave, this is the month in which Allah is going to give knowledge and wisdom. And that knowledge and wisdom is gained by the good characteristics that Allah tests His servant. When He tests His servant it's a sign that He loves them. And you say, no, no, no this is not relevant to Allah, everything is relevant to Allah. If you get in your car and your car breaks down it's relevant to Allah how is it going to test you? Your interaction when Allah is going to test you from where? The, the gardener bothering you, the mailman bothering you, especially if you know the mailman. <laughs> it's going to come from where? It's going to come from every direction in our lives, every direction we're going to find testing. The ones that are most sensitive are the ones that have closest access to your heart. Means the people who are close to us, they can push buttons that fire off every type of emotion. Allah will push those buttons to remain calm, to remain peaceful, to remain steady headed, to remain that, Ya Rabbi you're testing my condition to give me a reward. And in our lives we said that when the shaykh wants to test, he's not going to test with like big things, oh please you go recite Surat Yaseen right now and tell me all the secrets. Oh okay Shaykh he gave me finally a big, big project to do. It's not like that. But he asked, can you go get a pizza for us right now? And you say, what? Why would I would leave like the zikr and do such a ridiculous thing? No I can't do that Shaykh. I said, that was the secret. When he asked something from you, 
and a comment came out of your mouth to be no. So think who was asking you at that moment? And that's the testing. The, this is a, is a path and is mysterious path. You don't know from where that test comes, how it comes and what minute it comes. But all of the adab was to be trained, Sabina wa ta'ala, I hear and I obey, I hear and I obey to the best of my ability. And that was our life, that the, the test comes with all these small little things. There was never a no, there was never a doubt, there was never an argument. It was always, Samina wa I heard and I'm trying my best to obey, to obey, to obey so that that criteria and begin to dress upon the soul of that servant that take off the locks of their ears. There are spiritual locks on the ears of servants and they don't hear anything other than the physical dimension. And the only way this lock is to come off is that Samina wa ta'ala that I hear and I obey Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum that to obey Allah is impossible for all of us, nobody hears that. They can barely keep their salah and their wudu. To obey, obey Prophet as impossible, to follow the sunnah hundred percent, to follow the love and the sharia and the whole way of Sayyidina Muhammad impossible. So Allah made it even easier, then follow these ulul am. Follow the people of the am that they take the command of Allah the command of Sayyidina Muhammad and the command of their amirs above them. That there are a, a hierarchy in the spiritual world in which they are taking the commands. If Allah guide us to the hands of these ulul am then what Allah want from us is listen, open up your hearing, your ears, bring your ears unto submission. Shaitan has marked all his people with all his earrings and all this ridiculous stuff on their ears. Why to grab them and show that my strings are on you? Like a cow, he moved them by their ears. So what Allah wants says, no one counter that. Don't put your ears for shaitan, put your ears for Rahman. How then you're going to move for Rahman? Then their string is a very subtle string, just they keep talking to you, why don't you do that? No. Why you don't do that? No. Why you do like that? No. That's because their way is a subtle way. If you can follow it then Allah give a tremendous reward. Shaitan's is an obvious way, he put marks all over them, some have like hundred marks on their ears, there's a hundred strings on that person's ears moving towards shaitan. So means Allah's way is subtle and soft way. You hear it, alhamdulillah if you got it. If you deny it, no worry, they'll be patient, they'll send it to you a hundred more times, hundred more times. That's why you can be in tariqah thirty years, forty years, fifty years and achieve nothing. But you sat with them, as I sat with them, it's like a jail time, you sat there for many years in prison. But did you achieve a station in which you hear and you obey, you hear and you listen? Then it shows that your ears aren't tasleem, your ears are submitting. If your ears submit Allah open your hearing, say, you're going to hear what people don't hear. And you feel a wind and energy and you listen and you begin to hear your consciousness. Because you are now somebody trained. How Allah could open your hearing if you're not safeguarded and trained? So anybody who, who wants to understand the logic, because you ask like a mullah something, he'll throw a book at you that don't ask me any questions. But <laughs> the logic, if you don't train this ear and Allah wanted out of His grace to open it for you, you would be the first person in the psychiatric world because you have no training, you don't know where you're going good and bad and you, you don't know who's whispering into your ear until the demon reveals itself. And it tells you nice things at first and then begin to haunt and taunt the servant and begin to whisper into them horrific things to do to people and to do to themselves until finally the person destroys and obliterates their own being. In psychiatry they may call that schizophrenia, they may call it bipolar, they may, may call it many things. 
But the most important thing to call it is there's a devil right there talking into the person's ear. If you don't train on how to be Samina wa ta'ana how Allah can open anything? And if He opened, that's what Allah says, don't ask for something that would cause you harm. If He opened without istiqam and firmness, the person will go mad because there's no firmness, not following sharia, not keeping wudu, not keeping ihtiram, not keeping respect, all the things that bring a barakah and a blessing to protect the servant. Good character, all awliyaullah are around that shaykh because of their good character, their light is all encompassing around them as a protection. If they're not trained in good character and good way then imagine Allah opening a door, it would be a door to insanity that every type of difficulty would be attacking the servant. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of this way, this, this <coughs> immense blessing that Allah wants to dress us and all He asks of us is have good character, good manners, that manners will bring us into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that His intercession to be upon us and His nazar to be upon us and to dress us and complete the ni'mat of Allah that He wants to put upon our souls. InshaAllah bin yati khatmi khawjikan and then after we'll talk about the meditation. This was about the, the significance of hearing as the first step in the meditations inshaAllah. Hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.